This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good night, good night, Crystal Covington. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful night? Oh, enjoying myself. Having a, it's been a really great day. To my time and the sun was out so what more can i ask for <laughs> that's wonderful that's wonderful what parts of the world are you in right now i am in um colorado in the united states all right all right and which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history mm, we're connected because um, I am a speaker and on some speaker um, communications, and I had the opportunity to learn about what you're doing. So I'm excited to learn more, connect, and have this chat. That's wonderful. Now tell me, what do you speak on, please? Oh, gosh. Several topics, but one of my main topics is influence. Really just taking what you know and what your greatest strengths are and turning them into things that can help you make an impact in the world. Mm. And what is your greatest strength? Mm. My greatest strength is connecting other people, hosting events, and really bringing people together to help um, uplift and educate one another. Sounds like community. Who did you learn that from? I don't know where I learned it from, but it definitely is something that over time um, became something that was a natural part of part of my life and something that as I started doing more of it it was it came easy to me and it I connected deeply with it when did you start um I think I started doing it officially when I launched my women of Denver organization and that was back in 2014 and it was the first time that I actually put those strengths to use in a in a really clear way and said, you know what, I'm going to host meetings and I'm going to connect women together and we're going to teach each other things. And it was just a flood of emotion the very first time I did it and I never wanted to stop. That's amazing. Have you ever done any events on the Red Rocks? Oh, yeah, I've been to Red Rocks. Yes, <laughs> you too. Have you been to Colorado or I have. done? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been to Red Rocks. It's gorgeous. Okay. I mean, but have you done events there as well? No, I haven't hosted events there. I okay. have been to events there. All right, all right. Is that a dream of yours to be able to do that at some point in time? Uh, no, I want. I feel like an event at Red Rocks to host would be a great deal of responsibility. That's a lot of seats to fill. So I'd rather be an attendee for sure at Red Rocks <laughs> and hike up to it. Hiking up to Red Rocks is gorgeous. Yes, yes, yes. It was an amazing experience being there. We got to interview individuals at one of the locations up there. And it was really, really a fascinating opportunity. Beautiful, most beautiful experience mm -hmm. that we had. So you're the person that is uh, the CEO of Women of Denver. You've been hosting... Uh, these events, uh, what have you learned thus far from doing what you're doing? I think the biggest thing I've learned is that being constantly, um, constantly having access to other people's knowledge, it brings you closer to what I like to call universal truth. So you have this opportunity to listen to so many people talk and you start finding connections between everything that they teach you. There's no, there's no right answer for the most part to all of the details. But when you look at the connections between what people do share, you find that there are truths within the different things that you want to learn, whether it be truths about money or truths about business or truths about career or truths about life. And those things continue to keep coming up. And eventually you start picking up on it and growing and being basically because I was running all these events forced to attend. I feel like I've grown a lot just by listening to other people and um, hearing their wisdom. That's wonderful. Yeah, there's this organic experience that occurs, isn't it? 
Yeah, I like that term, that organic experience. Yeah. Where can people who are listening connect with you? They can connect with me very easily on, um, I'm, con- I'm on social media at Crystal Go Lead, Crystal with a K. And then on my website, crystalcovington.com, again, Crystal with a K, K-R-O-Y. Wonderful. Now tell me one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years, please. Something I've done consistently over the last three years, besides just growing indivi- as an individual, is continue to hone my skills as a businesswoman. I um, left my corporate career. Um, I had a great corporate career. I was a de- director of public relations and um, made the decision to focus and w- work on my talents as a business owner. And I've been really honing that, learning more about what it means to be successful in business, learning more about what it means to really serve your customers in the way that connects with them and continues to keep them um, coming back and referring you um, and then honing my speaking skills and getting really great opportunities, which has been um, exciting. It's terrifying (laughs) every time. So that fear never goes away. People ask me all the time, well, after a certain amount of time, do you ever stop being afraid? No, (laughs) you just, learn to get through the fear and not be um, worried about, you know, what, what will happen after you leave the stage. It really doesn't matter. You're going to go up, you're going to do the best you can. You're going to use the preparation that you gave yourself. And then, you know, you're going to learn. So the biggest thing that's going to happen is you're going to learn. So whether you did amazing or you had room for improvement, you'll learn something from that experience and the next time will be even greater. Love it. Love it. Amazing audience. Again, you're hearing it live from Crystal Covington. She is the CEO of Women of Denver. Crystal, let's switch gears for a moment. Let me invite you into my time machine. I'm surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Crystal, mm-hmm. what's your earliest childhood memory? Oh, gosh, my earliest childhood memory that popped in my head was meeting my first friend. Um, I had spent a lot of time with adults as a kid um, because I was an only child for a little while. My my next sister um, is six years um, younger than me, so I had six years before I had another kid in the house. And so I remember being outside Um, standing on the sidewalk and then Keisha and her cousin who we called Smirky. And I have no idea where that nickname (laughs) came from. (laughs) Her name, I I don't even know her real name, Um, but (laughs) Keisha and Smirky walked up and they started talking to me and I didn't even know how to respond. I thought, wow, these are, this is so fun. I was just having a great time talking to them outside my house and I hoped they'd come back. Hmm. That's pretty amazing. How do you see that memory connecting to who you are today? Oh, God, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I guess it's a reflection of just having a great, uh, really enjoying connection with, at the time, other girls, now other women. And Hmm. I really, I'm an introvert. I don't need a lot as far as um, the amount of time I spend with other people, but I like it to be quality and I really appreciate relationships and having a few good people that I really care about and can connect with and can be authentic with. Hmm. Can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind with that memory? Mm. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear it. Ooh, I just, I, I really love the fact that who you are can peer through even in silence. So those young ladies, those young kids, as you said, they connected with you and you weren't holding up a placard like I need friends or I want to be your friend. Mm -hmm. But just by your your demeanor, by the way you were and who you are, that was enough. And I think uh, what you were speaking about earlier on in our conversation spoke to that, uh, the way you've learned organically. It's in silence, isn't it? It's You have to be silent to listen uh, most times. And to see that you've done that and created a space for that for even more other women, it's beautiful. I really love that interpretation. Yeah, 
Thank you. A lot, a lot can be learned and gathered in silence. Yeah, definitely. If we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? Oh, I wanted to look. I remember seeing this on your, <laughs> hearing this asked for other people. And I, went, I had looked it up and I can't remember what that year was. But the first thing I think of is, I don't know if it's the right age or, or not, but TLC and anything TLC. But the first thing that popped in my head was Ch- Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls. And I just remember they looked so cool standing in the water. Um kind of do you know doing this little dance and i wanted to know how to do it like them hmm, that's super cool one of the things we found is connections to the lyrics of the song and i'll just draw a line to that you know don't go chasing waterfalls and then the key word listen yeah mm, yes they did say listen to the, the rhythm movies. and listen understood yeah <laughs> that you're close to yeah love it yes all right my friend well we've arrived at our destination but before we get off of this time machine there's a small declaration form so it is yes or no we're going to move pretty quickly here are you ready okay. crystal all have right. you chosen someone to pass on your skills to yes are you married yes do you have children almost do you believe in god Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was that voice. <laughs> what about screen time, the phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Less than eight. All right, Crystal, if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, Crystal Covington, what would you say that is? Hmm. A person who listens, cares, and helps educate others. Love it. Crystal, this was such a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Um. Have fun, love life, and focus on the things that really matter. Let the other stuff go. Crystal Covington, such a great pleasure. Thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. This segment has been brought to you by Amazel Enterprise.